Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about the topic of um, restoring your firearms, whether it be military surplus, even some of the older civilian ones, or even a modern current production gun. We all know going through and, and buying guns here and there, you run across stuff every now and again. Uh, guns that have been, that are incomplete, have broken parts or missing parts, or they just got beat up and you're thinking, hey, you know, it would be a pretty good restoration project, you know, work on. Uh, parts for firearms, there are several large companies that, that have done this for years. Uh, Numerich Arms is one uh, for years, long for computers and that. They had a catalog, and if you needed parts for an uncommon gun, you used to write them a letter, tell them what parts you needed, like a stock or trigger guard screw, front or rear, and send them the letter, and then they would write you a letter back, take your letter, check their inventory, and write down uh, if they had the part and how much it would cost. I remember doing that back in the 70s, okay? Then online there's several other places, and some of them specialize in, in different things, like uh, Corbin Barrels. If you need a shotgun barrel, there's a guy out in Utah or something that he's, he has them for 870s, 1100s, basically what I fooled around with him one time. That was the guy to go to. And he'd have all these unusual barrels. He kind of specialized in these parts. There's another place called Bob's Gun Parts. And that's, he has a strange website. Has things listed on there. Uh, and basically some of these places, you might have to just call them on the phone and talk to them about parts. But it used to be it wasn't that difficult to locate, especially for military guns. Everybody had busted up guns or parts or whatever. Or you would buy a gun that was missing parts or damaged or in rough shape. You know, that's where you get the term parts gun. You buy it for stripping the parts off. And some people do pick up military rifles. The 88 Mauser is one. There's always somebody looking for a part on there. And, you know, you can make a decision. The gun's really not collector grade, it's missing some pieces, it's not in that good a condition, and people will just disassemble it and sell every single screw, uh, barrel band, stock, bolt, whatever, firing pin. <clears throat> so that's, that's another thing people will do. But say like, you know, I made that video, I'm on my own business, somebody comes along, <clears throat> I'm involved in Carcanos. I don't know, maybe the guy seen one of the videos and recognized me. He goes, hey, I got these Carcano uh, barreled actions, you know, or barrel, you know, barrel actions without the bolts. And I tried asking him what it was, and he, he didn't know, and ended up trading a fella some stuff I had that really I wasn't using. It's been laying in a garage. I didn't know what I was going to do with it. So I swapped them for three, uh, they come out to be uh, 9138 cavalry carbines, a receiver and a barrel on there. And these things were packed in some of the most vile cosmoline. It took me like three or four days to clean these guns out. And it's just a barrel receiver and a trigger group. I mean, the stuff was nasty. But I cleaned them out and they have, I'm not going to say they have mint bores, but they had damn good bores, I'd say excellent, uh, you know, excellent plus. Two of the rifles still had the World War II markings on there in the day. I think one's 40 and 41. And then there's one here that somebody ground the hell out of. Now, I don't know if this was done because I have another rifle that was ground like that, that Troop Special. They ground the sight and everything. You ground everything off, so that's kind of problematic having a gun with no markings or nothing on it. It's kind of illegal, so I don't know what I'm going to do with this. So I said, you know, why don't we try throwing one together? Carcano is pretty common, should be easy to find the parts, blah, blah, blah. Well, 
And I said, they got nice bores. If anything, get enough parts to assemble one gun that I can swap out once I get headspace gauges, which I also invested in because I have so many Carcanos now, I might as well, the headspace gauges, it warrants dropping 100 bucks for the three gauge set and checking all the weapons out. And uh, so what I come in after about $275, $280 later with the shipping and handling, I come up with one of these. I got a real nice stock. The stock was in real good shape and it came with the uh, all the metal was with it. So that wasn't bad. A complete bolt, you can get carbine style bolt for $75. Uh, I shopped around, I found another one for like 50 bucks. Or if you like scrounging parts, <coughs> I did get a bolt, ah, I forgot what I paid, just the bolt body, some guy looks like he bead blasted it or something. It's got an extractor in it, but then again I have a few spare internal components where I can put it together, but, you know, just to use up the extra parts. But it ends up coming out to where bolts are, depending on who you get it from, 50 to 75 dollars. Some people charge $125, you know, but no, about $50 to $100 bucks for a bowl. <coughs> uh, stocks, actually there were two of them up for grabs. I got the one that was more expensive and I didn't really, I was trying to save money, didn't really want to run up the bidding on the other one, but I kind of kicked myself because I could have got it and had another one, but we'll just have to wait. And it's another thing, it's kind of like a waiting game. I'll uh, have to just see. Now you can get the uh, magazine and trigger, the lower trigger guard, it's like 30 bucks complete. And the screws, screws, the action screws are 8 bucks a piece. And a lot of places don't have the small screws that go in to hold the barrel bands. Uh, so that could be a problem. So that's where I was thinking, one of the reasons I got the lathe is to start making all these little bits, pieces, screws and that. There is a guy out there, if you go on some of the collector's forms, uh, he has somebody make, like for Japanese guns, he collects and he's kind of an expert in Japanese uh, rifles and that. And he has all these little parts made and he stops them and he uh, marks them with uh, a stamp or prick punch, so you know they're reproductions. And because I had to buy some uh, uh, trigger guard screws from, I had to buy a set because I had a gun I took apart, and the Japanese they put them rifles together so they don't come out, and I kind of destroyed the screws removing them. I had to replace the screws in a rifle, uh, Type 99, and it comes in handy, you know. You pay for it. Buddy has a correct screw that fits. Blue, nice, repro screw. Uh, I was thinking of getting into it, but you kind of, it all depends. Now, if you had parts, or you know somebody's got a bunch of old parts and stocks, I've seen people sell them guns that you had like five rifles, bolt action rifles, where all the bolts missed. Guys say, give me 50 bucks, I'll give you all four of them or whatever, you know, and they're all rusted and covered in cosmoline and junk and beat up. But, see a deal like that, there were some Carcanos in there, just the one stock alone, you can kind of make out on the deal, but it's hard. When the guns get parts missing, it's kind of hard because a lot of people, too, don't know the different models and what fits in there. Uh, the same guy I got these from had two Yugoslavian Mauser actions. They were stripped actions that somebody put on barrels, brand new barrels. And I said, it's, it's a neat project. He, you know, he didn't have a lot of money in them, but I said, you know, they're strong actions that they'll work, but just gathering all the parts, you know, even if you got the receiver in a barrel for practically nothing. By the time you go and buy all the little bits, pieces, the trigger and everything else you put in there, it's going to total up some money. Now it ain't looking like a good deal. But, you know, that, that's where you have to choose and maybe you get lucky 
and you get a bunch of parts for practically nothing, somebody just wants to get rid of them or, you know, because I, I have uh, bought parts and actually bought a box of parts and the guy said, I think there's a whole gun in there and there was a Czech VZ-24 inside there. The barrel was shot out, but for what I paid for it, I put it all back together again and sold it for, I made $10 more than what I paid for the parts and still had a box full of parts, you know. So, you never know. Restoration can be fun, it's a nice little project, but it can be costly, so when you embark on one of these projects, you got to kind of, you know, think about it. You can find parts pretty easy, but people are going to ask an awful lot of money, and sometimes they get ridiculous of what they want. So it's something to think about, and that's my one little project. You know, generally I kind of stay away from from them because of that. You know, you don't know if you'll find the parts. and You might have to look for a year, or two years, three years before you find some of these parts for these old guns, especially stocks and stuff like that. So that's my thoughts on it. I thought I'd make this little video about it, discuss it. And I did make a video where I shoot this the parts gun, where I shoot this at 50 yards. You can see that. Uh, that's been listed and show you how these things do.